Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by West Coast Fighting Championship owner Brandon Ware. Brandon, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Brandon, you guys got an event coming up February 15th at the McKellen Conference Center in Sacramento, California. It's going to be WFC 8. Before we get to that event, there's a couple fighters I wanted to ask you about when we'll see them uh, back in action. Uh, Scott Smith, he suffered an injury. He was supposed to fight Max Griffin on February 15th, but he suffered an injury and was removed from the card. What exactly is his injury, and how long is he expected to be out? Well, Scott, I mean, he's made it public, so um, he has a, a drinking problem pretty much. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And he is uh, he, I mean, he's the, one of the nicest guys, humblest guys, and he will fight anybody. You look at his track record, he's fought the toughest guys in the world, you know, and he doesn't, you know, use his wrestling. A lot of people don't know he's got a wrestling background. He stands right in the pocket and bangs, and it's just... Uh, uh, it's sad, you know, he, he's struggling with some demons right now, and he did hurt his hand, he was supposed to be on this card, and um, I think he's uh, back getting help, but, you know, it, it's a disease, you know, and it's going to be a constant struggle for him, and, you know, we, we pray for him, I just heard him for the first time today, and, you know, he's just he's just struggling a little bit, and he'll get back, he, he knows the power of sobriety, and, uh, you know, and, and like I said to him, I am about the fighters first, and I want to see him get better, you know, for his boys and for him. I can mm-hmm. care less if he fights Max Griff, and I'd love to see it. But bottom line is I want to see him healthy, and, you know, he really is a great guy. He's a great friend of mine before fighting. And uh, as we connected to when, uh, uh, when I moved to the region with James Irvin, they uh, were working out, owned the UTC gym together. So um, Scott... You know, he is uh, just uh, has some personal issues and got some demons that he's hopefully overcoming. But uh, he's in no position to fight. You know, on this card or you know, probably for a while. He needs to get healthy, and uh, you know, we we pray for the best for him because he is probably one of the toughest guys you know in the region. And you know, we hope he gets better for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, with that being said, what's the plan with Max Griffin? Does he, you know, possibly uh, defend the interim belt uh, against somebody? Is it possible that David Mitchell, if he gets a win, do you make that fight at welterweight? Because right now, Max Griffin also has the welterweight belt. Uh, what's the plan yeah, for Max Griffin? Yeah. The, those guys are all one seventies, other than Scott Smith. They all want a right. piece of Scott Smith because he's got the big name. But right. you know, Kung Lee Diaz. Um, you know, Pete Sell, Daly, all the big names. So oh, right. they all jumped up to 185 strictly to fight Scott. You know, they wanted a big name opponent. And, you know, that's what the big promotions look for. So um, those guys are all 170. So I, Max is a 170. Um, but if it makes sense, I'll go to 85 if it's a big name. Um, but David Mitchell wants Max bad. You know, and but David's, David's got to earn it. You know, he's coming off a couple losses. Um, you know, in Brazil in the UFC, mm-hmm. let's not forget that. So um, I could see that, you know, David Mitchell has a really tough opponent, February 15th, and Fernando Gonzalez. Uh, Fernando uh, fought Max for the interim 185 belt, and uh, it was very, very close. A lot of people say, you know, Max won. A lot of people said Fernando won. I, I personally thought it was really, really close, and Max said it was one of the toughest guys, the toughest, toughest guy he's ever fought so we'll see how David Mitchell does against Fernando if David Mitchell is able to walk through Fernando um, which I highly doubt is Fernando's I mean Mitchell's one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in the area but uh, Fernando's a tough tough guy out of Team Quest so we'll see how that plays out but I think if David Mitchell uh, you know runs through Fernando you know it makes sense to have him and Max fight but we'll see how all that plans out a lot of stuff happens so um, but they would definitely go down to 170. They're both 170s. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Now, Anthony Ruiz, he's your light heavyweight champion. When are you expecting to have him back? Uh, I talked to Anthony. Uh, we were at the Cali Fights Awards, and uh, I talked to him. And, yeah, we need to get him a fight. He was fighting out in Russia, um, out in Tachi. So he's been kind of around. But, yeah, he, he's definitely well, probably looking at <laughs> April um I'm going to go talk to his manager actually this afternoon. So 
Uh, the problem with Anthony is it's just a crazy record. I mean, the guy's got 50 fights. So um, it's very tough to find a guy with even close to that many fights that's still in the region. You know, guys that are, you know, 18 to 5, you know, 20 and 6, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're in the big show. Right. So that's what makes it tough. I mean, the commission's not going to allow a 4 and 0, 3 and 1 guy to, to fight Ruiz with 50 fights. So, um, you know, we'll see how it all plans out, plays out. But, you know, I got somehow the uh, Jamie Hart and Max Griffin fight to um, go through, which it took a lot, a lot of work. But, um, yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, Anthony is a great guy, a great camp, very respectful guy, one of the nicest guys in the sport, one of the toughest guys. And, uh, yeah, we should uh, see him in the cage probably on uh, WFC 9. Mm-hmm. Now, Dave Huckabaugh, he's fighting for World Series of Fighting right now, but he's your heavyweight champion. Is it possible for him to come back to West Coast, or is he you know, completely exclusive with World Series? Yeah, Dave's, Dave's a good buddy of mine. We actually uh, we, we just went on vacation last weekend together. So um, his you know, wife's incredible and you know, a great family, and uh, we, we, we have a really good relationship business-wise and personal. And with, with him... Um, I don't know if it's released, so I can't say. Has it been released who he's fighting? No, not yet. I haven't seen anything. Yeah, so, yeah, I haven't heard anything either. <laughs> so, um, I, uh, he is exclusive with them. Um, he's, you know, probably one of their top ten guys, I would say, as of right now. You know, they, the, the guy's tough, man. He's, you know, heavyweight. He loves to talk. He loves to knock out people. Um, that's, promoters love that kind of stuff, so. Um, he has said to me uh, a few times, though, when he ends his career, he wants to end it at, at West Coast. So um, he'll be back, but I don't think he'll be back anytime soon. So um, we'll probably, you know, vacate his belt, let him keep it because he deserved it, you know, but vacate it and have another up-and-comer uh, fight for it here probably next year or this year. Um, and then, you know, eventually a few years down the line after he's done with his run, because uh, he's, you know, he's getting up there, he's 39. Mm-hmm. So he's got, you know, a good three, four years in the sport, and then uh, he wants to finish with us. So that's kind of how it's going to go down. Mm-hmm. Now your bantamweight champion Jeremiah Labiano, he's fighting at Tachi on Thursday against Joe Soto yep. for the bantamweight title of Great Tachi fight. Palace. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's an awesome fight. You took the words right, right out of my yep. mouth. Um, yep. Now you said at the WFC eight press conference that you feel that he's going to be the guy to go, you know, the next guy. You mentioned Andre Feely, how he went to the UFC, and you said uh, Labiano is going to be the next guy to go. Um, you know, should he get a victory over Joe Soto, not only will he beat, you know, a former world champion, Joe Soto was a featherweight champion in Bellator, but uh, he'll own both the best belts in the region. He'll have the Tachi belt and he has the West Coast belt. Um, yeah. A win here, does he get that call? Uh, well, I mean, what I know about UFC is, you know, they like a couple of things. They like exciting finishers. They like the personality. Um, and they like, you know, people beating, you know, the, their opponents with, you know, good records. So uh, there's guys that are, you know, 13-1, 13-0. You know, they come over to us and they get killed just because they've been hand-fed people. So mm-hmm. um, I know they look for that. But there's just some guys that are company guys that get it. Like you mentioned Andre Feely. He gets it. He has the... Uh, he finishes guys. He knows what to say on camera. He, you know, exciting personality, exciting fighter, and that's with Labiano. The same exact thing, man. I love that. I love that he's their champion. He's exciting. He gets it. You know, he, he understands it's not only about fighting. Um, and uh, but at, at the fighting end, the guy's incredible. He's exciting, and uh, I think it's very possible. I mean, I'm sure he's already getting calls. Um, I know the uh, XFC offered him a contract. Mm-hmm. It just didn't work out. Um, I'm sure Bellator has already called him. I'm sure World Series. Um, I can't imagine them. Uh, his manager hasn't been in contact with those guys already. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely possible um, that he gets that call after beating a guy like Soto. Um, you know, but we'll see. You know, he might need a couple wins. It all depends. I mean, you look at Andre Feely, he stayed in the region, I feel, probably a little too long you know, he probably should have gotten, you know, a few fights before that. But, you know, it, it, uh, you know, it's politics at some some levels. And, you know, 
Uh, some guys go a little earlier and some guys have to wait. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it's risky. I mean, you look at Labiano, you know, he could maybe have gone into a, another bigger tier promotion, but, you know, he wants to go to the UFC, but, you know, he's taking a huge risk, you know. Because mm-hmm. if he loses, he's right back to, you know, putting three wins together and trying to get back, but, you know, there's no guarantee in any way. Mm-hmm. Now, what weight do you like Labiano better at, 145 or 135? Because uh, I think his last fight at Tachi was at 145. Maybe it was a catchweight, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was 145. And he looked yeah. gigantic. And I'm like, how how in the world does this guy make 135? So yeah. what, what weight do you like him better at? I mean, if he can stay at 35, I mean, the guy's the biggest 35 ever. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. he is huge. But uh, he diets right. He's got a great camp. Um, he's at Crispin BBGA. Um, and you know he he gets it. You know he takes it serious as his as full time job. Um, but yeah, if he can stay at one thirty five, he could come on the scene in the UFC and make you know a huge splash. I mean, the guy's gigantic. Um, I mean, it looks like he comes in as a welterweight. You know, the day of the fight. Um, so if he can figure that out and you know get his nutrition, a lot of these guys uh, you know have certified nutritionists and. Um, they they understand how to make weight, and you know I, I'd like to see him at one thirty five. Mm-hmm. Now earlier you talked about Andre Feely. Now obviously you're you're happy that he made it to the UFC and, and he got that call and he had a great performance in his first fight against Jeremy Larson. But uh, I, I know you're happy that he, that he's in the UFC now. But is there you know still a part of you that's disappointed that we didn't get to see that Max Griffin fight because you know I think it's pretty safe to say that that fight now will never happen because of the the difference in weight and I don't think um, he he will have any interest if Max Griffin makes it to the UFC the moving up to 170 or and I know for a fact that. Max Griffin would never make 145, so it's pretty safe to say that that fight will never happen. Um, are you disappointed that you never got to see that fight? Uh, yeah, there's no chance of that fight ever happening. Right. Uh, maybe, you know, in 15 years, uh, that's, that's about <laughs> it. Maybe like a 220 catch weight. Right. That's about <laughs> right. the only time that fight will happen. But as a fan, yeah, I mean, that's probably the biggest fight of the region. I mean, that was two superstars going at it. Um, but yeah, as a fan, but as a you know, like I said, and all my fighters know, I'm I'm fighter first with their future, um, and you know I was excited that Feely got the call. I want Max to get the call, and um, a lot of guys, you know, they don't really they're not used to that with other promoters in the region, and you know I've been pretty consistent with that. Like Max is one of our biggest ticket sellers, you know, exciting fighter. I mean that. You know, we've, we started this together as our first show, and we've been through, you know, a lot together. But, man, I, I don't want to see him fight here in the next few years. I want to see him, you know, in the UFC and, you know, World Series, Bellator. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited Feely made it. It would have been a, a really exciting fight. Um, but, you know, yeah, that, that fight's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Of the guys who are left in the region, is Max Griffin the pound for pound best fighter? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to send me Labiano's right up there. Um, yeah, Max is good. I mean, the only thing I would I would say Max uh, needs to stay away from the decisions because mm-hmm. um, we all know. Uh, I mean, I look at the Dillashaw fight. I don't know if you saw that fight. He's you know a guy from the region, right? Um, he fought in Brazil. I forget the opponent. Uh, Rafael Assunção. Yeah, yeah, and he, uh, should, I mean, he won the fight. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. And you know, I, you know, and even Dana White always says it never leave in the hand of the judges. That's the only thing I think Max needs to do. I mean, he's an incredible fighter, amazing heart, and he's fought you know the who's who of the region. Um, but he needs to finish him. Um, he needs to, uh, you know, he can't have a lot the, the judges dictate. You know uh, the outcome. So, um, but everything else, I mean, he's pretty full rounded. Um, you know, he's working on his ground game. His stand up's really solid. His cardio is incredible. Um, and you know, he's a really respectful guy. And uh, yeah, he is probably the Emil Fabiano or the top pound for pound fighters in the region for sure. Mm-hmm. 
Brandon, two more fighters I want to ask you about. Uh, the first one is uh, Mark Matthews. What's going on with him? Because uh, he had a fight with Scott Smith, and it was a very exciting fight. Uh, you know, he, he ended up on the wrong side of the KO, but up until that point, it was a great fight, very exciting. Uh, what what exactly happened with him? Because uh, first, it went from I think WFC seven. It was supposed to be a rematch between him and Scott Smith, and then. Uh, you know, things changed because Feely got called up to the UFC and Max Griffin was available. So then Mark Matthews got, you know, was the odd man out and it became Smith versus Griffin. And then when Scott Smith dropped out, a lot of people thought that maybe Mark Matthews was going to slide into that spot and fight Griffin for the interim belt. But uh, Fernando Gonzalez ended up getting that slot. And now he was supposed to fight David Mitchell on this card coming up on February 15th, but then he got injured. Uh, what exactly uh, is his situation? You know, Why didn't he get that fight against Max Griffin at WFC 7? And, and what's his injury that uh, is preventing him from fighting on the 15th? Yeah, well, well, Mark, I mean, I've known Mark, uh, a lot of people don't know this, I've known him on a personal level before he was even a fighter, so mm-hmm. he, uh, his, uh, his former wife, ex-wife, I went to high school with her, so I've known Mark for years, um, on a personal level before, you know, he was just a tattoo artist, so, right. mm-hmm. um, we have that, you know, that friendship too, so we, you know, he's got a, you know, a manager, and and all that good stuff but you know we just kind of speak directly because we have that relationship um but the, the whole reason with the feely and max uh it just made sense you know it's the two top guys in the region and you know that, that's why we decided to go that route and, and you know mark understood that you know he understood that that's you know made sense for us as a promotion to have the biggest best guys two pound for pound guys in the region fight each other so it he understood it. I mean, he wasn't exactly thrilled about it, but he understood it. You know, it is a business as well. And uh, so he understood that. And then as far as uh, the VFC 7, uh, we did offer that fight to him, the fight max. And uh, he just wasn't ready. I don't know the exact, you know, I think he hurt his ankle a little bit and just wasn't 100% healthy. And, uh, you know, but we, yeah, we offered that fight to him. Um and then Fernando stepped up and took the fight. And now, uh, you know, he went through some personal stuff, you know, in the relationship aspect. And when uh, he's over on the East Coast now, I mean, he's a phenomenal tattoo artist. And uh, he's always been torn between fighting and tattooing. And it's tough. He's kind of hasn't been able to give 100% to each of them. And it's tough because, you know, on the regional level, MMA isn't going to pay the bills. His tattooing, his profession is. Mm. So... Um, you know, I don't know. You know, he's probably got a couple fights. He's getting a little older. Um, you know, but he's, you know, as of now, concentrating on, you know, traveling the world and tattooing. So he's going to all different expos. And, uh, so that's what he's primarily doing right now. Um, and he's, he hasn't retired yet or anything like that. But, you know, it's safe to say he's taking a little bit of a breather, you know, and concentrating mm-hmm. on tattooing right now. Mm-hmm. Now, Anthony Avila, he's going to be the main event for WFC 8, but this time he's going to be looking to grab the featherweight strap for West Coast. Is he still lightweight champion, or did he vacate that title to move down to featherweight? Yeah, he, he, he vacated it. Um, he, yeah, the problem was him and Feely are best friends, mm-hmm. so they didn't want to fight each other, and as you all know, fighters love belts, so right. that's kind of how it went down. So, um, yeah, so he vacated the 55 belt, and uh, yeah, he'll be fighting for um, the featherweight belt, which Feely vacated when he left for the UFC. Mm-hmm. Now, transitioning to WFC 8 coming up on February 15th, when you look at this card uh, and you look at the matchups, uh, what is the fight on this card that people aren't talking about that should be talking about a fight? When you look at the card, what's the fight on this card? I mean, there's a couple, obviously, you know, the Avila Brickovich, you know, Team Alpha Male versus Scrap Pack, mm-hmm. you know, and they're both their top guys and they're up and coming prospects, so that's exciting. But, man, believe it or not, it's, uh, we have a female fight, Aspen Ladd versus Cynthia Cavillo. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they're going to, I mean, they're, I think uh, Cynthia's 6 and 1. Uh, she's from Team Alpha Male, and you get Aspen Ladd, who's 6 and 0. Oh. Uh, from MMA Gold Fight Team, that's going to be exciting, man. I can't wait to see that. Uh, I mean, I love female fights, but I love high-level female fights. 
uh, it's been my, I don't know what, I, either I see it's a female fight, it's really good or really bad. There's no in-between. So these girls are both super high level. I mean, 6-1 and one or 6-0, and oh, you can't ask for anything really better than that. And uh, another one that's exciting is, you know, I love, I love guys that stand and bang, man. I, I love to see that. Nothing against wrestlers or jiu-jitsu guys, but I like to see that, you know, a fan. And we had Thomas Fallon versus Jordan Powell. Thomas, I believe, was around 6-0, and 7-0, and as an amateur. He's making his debut over Jordan Powell, who's, I think I want to say, 3-1. and um, Both, you know, amazing strikers, and um, they both like to talk a little bit. So it, it's always fun when uh, you get that aspect in it, but... Those should be uh, fireworks. I'm really excited about those two fights, mm-hmm. as well as the main card. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the David Mitchell, Fernando Gonzalez is going to be a super high level fight. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a really great card. We're excited. Mm-hmm. Now, where is this fight card going to be broadcast on? Is it going to be internet pay per view again? Yeah, it's going to be internet pay per view. You go to westcoastfighting.com. Mm-hmm. The link will be on the homepage, um, and I believe it's. Uh, I think it's uh, 19 bucks, something like that. Mm-hmm. And you watch, you can watch all the AMI fights and all the pro fights. Oh, so uh, so the whole thing? Oh, yeah. All, okay. Yeah, it's not a bad deal. Oh, that's a great deal. I, I thought it was just the, yeah. main, the main card, but we're getting everything here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing everything. We're doing all the AMI fights and all the pro fights. Oh, I see, I see. Now, the venue, what, what's the size of this venue and you know how many tickets are still available? Uh, it's a smaller venue um, on this one. I mean, in the region, I mean, typically you see about 800 seat venue. Right. For us, um, I mean, we the, the max Kilo fight, we had about 4,500 people there. So um, the commission actually told us after that show, he's like, you guys doubled what Strike Force did their last couple shows. And I was like, wow, it's exciting. But uh, they're obviously not in business anymore, so I don't know how exciting that is. Right. <laughs> but, uh, they were obviously a you know a top player for quite a while, um, but yeah, this one still holds up to two thousand people. So on a regional level, it's you know almost three times a, a normal casino type show. Um, the only uh, and it, it'll be a sellout. You know, like I said, we're used to three to four thousand uh, venue. You know, but you know, like most people, they wait till the last second. So there'll probably be uh, seats. You know, tickets available at the door. Or you can get them on westcoastfighting.com. But especially if you go to the VIP cage side seats, um, you can purchase those right away. They're, they're very limited on that aspect. But, yeah, it should be a swap. Mm. WFC 9, do we have a date for when that event will be? Yeah, it's tentatively April 26th at McClellan Conference Center. Um, we're working on another venue, um, a long-term deal in Sacramento area. Uh, that should be finalized here in the next few months. That'll be in August. We'll uh, we'll start with them. I can't really release too much information about it, but uh, it will be uh, possibly a, a long term deal, um, which we're really excited about. But we're just uh, can't really jump the gun. There's a lot of paperwork, contracts, all that stuff. And it's kind of makes sense for everybody, but I would say we're about ninety percent um, committed. How many events are planned for 2014? Uh, we're going to bump it up to possibly five, um, five to six. Um, we do one every quarter for sure, but um, we're, we're coming back uh, late April, two and a half months. So uh, we're, we're trying to you know step it up a little more to six times a year. Mm-hmm. Brandon, real quick before I let you go, yep. website, Twitter, Facebook, anything you want to plug, sponsors, anything you want to plug, go ahead. The floor is yours. Oh, uh, my, my, uh, my media guy's going to kill me. I always forget all this stuff. <laughs> but uh, we're on Facebook, obviously, West Coast Fighting. Um, just search us, and you'll find us there. Um, our Twitter, I believe, is I believe it's uh, WFC MMA. Um, and then I'll share websites, westcoastfighting.com. And, uh, you know, to, to thank, we just want to thank, you know, all our sponsors, um, basically all our fighters, managers, everyone that makes it possible. And um, definitely our fans. We have a lot of loyal fans. And um, definitely, you know, uh, James Husbeth, Jess Husbeth, Brian Rush, the team, those guys put in all kinds of hours. And we really, uh, as an organization, 
Uh, we need, you know, all those moving parts to make it happen, and obviously all our families, and, um, you know, that, that's the big thing is, you know, they put up with a lot, and, um, you know, so we just want to thank them, and thank you for uh, media guys like yourself that spread the word. Mm-hmm. Brandon, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it, and best of luck with the event coming up on February 15th and uh, all events in the future. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time as well.